Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where every day we try to demystify a different technology and put it in a language that everyone understands and do that every single day, 365 days of the year. And today I've invited James Bailey from Subquery onto the podcast to talk about building decentralized networks that have huge communities, sourcing data for cross-chain application development, and building core infrastructure for the blockchain industry, amongst other things, of course. But enough spoilers and scene setting from me. Buckle up and hold on tight because it's time for me to beam your ears all the way to New Zealand, where James is waiting to share his story and discuss some of these topics with us today. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about how you got here and share your origin story with everyone? Yeah, thanks, Neil. So my name is James Bailey. I'm the head of business development at uh, two blockchain companies. One's called Omfinality and the other one's called Subquery. Uh, how I got here, um, very interesting roundabout way. Uh, I've always been a software developer for a long time. I've kind of worked a lot in product management. And for a long time, I kept hearing about this thing called blockchain. And it kind of piqued your interest or piqued my interest, certainly. Mm. Uh, for a software developer, there's like two leading edges of, of software development. There's AI and blockchain. So uh, I was naturally drawn towards the latter. And uh, the rest is kind of history. I've been working in the space. Um, I moved from product management to business development. Um, but it's the same concept. Uh, one is internally selling an idea, um, selling a vision or a product to the, to the team. And the other, which is what I'm doing these days, is selling that externally. So same approaches, same challenges, just slightly different. And of course, fast forward to 2022, as you said, you're working at Subquery, which I believe is a data as a service platform that speeds up querying and and also extracting blockchain data. So ultimately, anyone can take the data off chain and and build their own Web3 applications for the future. But for people that are hearing about Subquery for the very first time, can you just can expand maybe on the kind of problems that you're solving with this tech? Yeah, so it's very simple when you break it down. Blockchain's a revolutionary bit of technology. Um, allows you to save data in a decentralized way and process that data in a decentralized way. But it's still quite tricky in some ways. And one of those ways is the way that the data store, is stored is, is really makes it really difficult to use that data. So a blockchain is literally a chain of blocks. Uh, it's, like, it's like a book um, where every 10 seconds you write a page to the book. And if you are reading a novel and you want to, for example, create a list of every time a character appears, which is the same thing as asking a blockchain, give me the last 10 transactions that I've made, you have to go through every single page sequentially. It's a pain in the ass. (laughs) Um, And it's the same challenge on blockchain. If you want to build applications that leverage data and, and the whole success of the internet is around how we can use data effectively and efficiently, that is what technology companies that we use every day is built on their efficient use of data so that would be the same in web3 and blockchain uh, we provide a tool that unlocks that and the way that we do it is basically scanning a blockchain every time a new block is added we take this particular bit of data that they're interested in we take it off chain and we put it into a traditional database and kind of provide that to uh, the customer to use in their application or service or whatever and it's such an exciting space at the moment, and the, the communities are just growing in size right across the landscape. So can you tell me a little bit more about building these decentralized networks that, that have these phenomenally huge communities, don't they? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's a different space, Neil, and, and um, obviously the market's going down, not just blockchain, but the technology market, um, all equity is going down at the moment. We're kind of heading to recession. But regardless, the challenges. um uh, are there. So one of the things about blockchain is you keep hearing about tokens. Why are there always tokens? Why does everyone have tokens? Tokens are equivalent to your share price of your company. Um, so they're both like the way that you interact with your company, but also the share price. And and for a number of reasons that we won't go into this meeting, but essentially imagine every time you went to the supermarket, um, you had to have a supermarket token to, to spend money at the supermarket token at the supermarket. And the sum of all these supermarket tokens is the total market cap of that supermarket, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the whole thing with um, decentralized Web3 
services and teams and, and projects. So building a community to then use that token, to um, obtain that token, to stake or deposit um, in that token to earn interest, uh, that's critical when you're building a, a Web3 project. You really have to bring the community along the ride for you. Everything you do, every product you release, um, every update um, that you talk about has to be built with the community in mind. And it, it's a really interesting um, challenge from a marketing point of view. Often when you build a software company, you kind of have your, your primary customer and you focus, a laser focus on that customer. But in Web3, you really have to worry about the kind of the general public as well and making sure that everyone understands what you're doing is along for the ride um, and sees the value and the vision that your project uh, operates under. And I would imagine it's quite challenging to do as well because you've got that passionate community that want continuous updates and they want to be knowing what's happening every week, how you're reaching your goals, et cetera. Equally, they'll be asking about partnerships and adoption, but you might have those partnerships but be locked down to a, a long list of NDAs. Mm. It, it must be quite difficult finding that balance, right? It's relentless. And and a lot of teams have done this differently. Some teams have announced partnerships and and basically um, screamed from the rooftops of, of new features and stuff long before they're developed, right? Yeah. So some people take that extreme approach because it's so critical to uh, turbocharging the growth of your community. Other projects are a lot more refined and restrained. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Kiwi, I'm a New Zealander. Uh, if you can't tell from the accent, and that means that I'm traditionally a little bit more uh, conservative. Um, so we like to wait a little bit longer. We like to test and 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 make sure what we've built is right before we advertise that loudly. But it's a relentless challenge, and it's one of the reasons why we joke in crypto that once you join, um, say goodbye to sleep. Um. <laughs> Oh, I love that. And of course, for many business leaders listening in traditional environments, the, the worlds of blockchain, crypto, Web3 can be a little bit intimidating and find it somewhat of a dark art and, and, and try to understand the value that it could bring in their real world and their business world and the future of that business. So from there, can, can you expand on sourcing data for cross-chain application development? Because again, that's where the magic's happening right now, isn't it? Mm, yes. So with the current state of of a blockchain and the blockchain kind of world of web three as we kind of collectively call it mm. uh is there's a lot of people building these kind of core layers of infrastructure um so chains for example uh DeFi protocols when i say protocol i mean like a um a rule set uh, that we operate under just like creating frameworks for banks and in, in, the, in the real world today uh but we're kind of yet to grow that next stage of, of building applications that everyone can use um, i commonly like make a joke that if my parents get into blockchain and start using applications we know that we've done that as an industry uh where we're currently at is there's a lot of kind of um spaces of people building these different on these different technology stacks and trying out different ideas to see what works um, we know that the technology is pretty revolutionary but the challenge is scaling that to something that can replace, for example, the Visa network or the MasterCard network. Um, so there's a lot of different communities that are living as kind of like islands. They don't really talk to each other, they don't interoperate. Um, and so one of the biggest shifts in the recent couple of years, and one thing we're focusing on a lot at SubQuery is multi-chain approaches. So how do we make it easier for one chain to talk to another chain? Um, which is akin to saying, how do we make it easy for you to move your photos from Instagram to Facebook? Um, because we've found that these uh, these clusters or these walled gardens of data, um, it doesn't really help the consumer in the long term. And with the consumer focused world that we're trying to build with blockchain, we really have to break those barriers as soon as possible. And that's the whole multi-chain challenge. And of course, for that business leader listening to our conversation today, who might be curious about how they build core infrastructure for the blockchain industry, is that something you can expand on in a language that they would well, understand? Too? Maybe the first, like, maybe the first suggestion is don't build core infra infrastructure for the blockchain. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> leverage other stuff. There's a lot of people working. Wait, where we are right now is like ninety seven. Um, where there's a lot of kind of crazy stuff. There's a lot of hype. There's a lot of con men. There's a lot of um, crap out there. Mm -hmm. And although we might laugh about pets.com going down um, after raising a sky high valuation, you know, 20 years later, we're looking back and going, well, internet's changed everything without the internet. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Viewers wouldn't be listening to this conversation. Um, everything that we do every day um, would be different. 
So for us in the space of the building and less focused on building these hype coins or whatever, um, for us, it's, we, we feel kind of similar that we're just kind of keeping our heads down and building those infrastructure tools. So those really core cool pieces that allow people to build those next applications. If you want to build that wallet or that banking application that is more accessible, that brings uh, banking to the next million people in Africa. Those are the applications that are coming and this technology or that we uh, aim to kind of bring through with this technology. And right now we're kind of building these, these infrastructure layers, which is the blockchains, the nodes, um, the endpoints, the data services like subquery, um, all of these pieces. And just to bring to life some of the things that we're talking about here, do you have any use cases or client stories that you can, you can share? I appreciate you probably can't name too many names, but is there anything you can just to bring that to life? No, yeah, so we, we work a lot. So we're a very fundamental um, infrastructure piece in that in that uh, that blockchain stack, the application stack, if you will. Um, for those technical people listening, they'll understand, like we talk about stacks as in like the coding languages that you use to build your application. Um, and we've become a very common core piece for a lot of different applications. So we have customers that use us for like NFT marketplaces. If you want to buy your favorite NFT and you want to see a, um, a list of all the previous owners of the NFT, that data comes from us. We have customers that use us to calculate the to the you know second uh, return on investment on a um, a particular derivative um, or loan position that you can take. Um, we have customers that use us to calculate uh, or to keep track of everyone's balances on the on the blockchain. So who's got money? Who's moving around? Um, who's investing where? Um, every idea, really, there is a, a use case using subquery. It's such a fundamental tool that um, it's kind of boring, but um, it's critical. Uh, and that's one of the things we have to say is that you don't really know that you, the tool you're using is using subquery. The way that you know is that it's a lightning fast user interface. Um, it's quick and snappy. You get the data that you need. It's an intuitive user interface. Um, and it's your favorite application as a result. And you're also the head of business development at OnFinality, which is a SaaS platform that supports blockchain blockchain teams worldwide by providing critical infrastructure so they can focus on building the next DApp. And when I was doing a bit of research on you, I read that the API service receives 700 million plus daily API requests from blockchain developers. Can you tell me more about your work here? Yeah, we've had days for over a billion API requests, wow. which is just ridiculous. It's like, it's like, it's thousands of seconds. It's, it's crazy. Um, so this is, again, we focus. So we have two kind of teams working um, on this, and I kind of represent both of them. Yeah. One is on the data, which is that subquery team that we talked about previously. Uh, on finale is all about the, the real low level. So this is like the nodes that run a network. So a blockchain um, is, is run by a various number of different nodes that kind of constantly collect what's happened in the last 10 seconds and save that to the chain, okay? Mm -hmm. um, we run high-performance nodes uh, specifically not to create and save stuff to the chain, but to answer people's questions about the chain. So if you want to ask the chain what's the current block height or what's just happened in the last block, chances are um, it will hit our node and we run hundreds of nodes um, across over 40 different networks uh, where you can make requests to us and we quickly answer those. And we have all these load balances. We run a large number of, amount of infrastructure at extreme high performances so that it never goes down. Um, so in a way, we're kind of like a layer above like AWS where uh, we just run these, these services on, on cloud providers, um, but we provide optimized blockchain infrastructure for our customers around the world. And as we record the podcast today, the world of crypto is going through, I would say, the usual volatile phase. But I'm curious, <laughs> what trends excite you in the industry at the moment? Because you're right in the heart of all this, and I'm sure you're monitoring every very everything very yeah. closely. Yeah, so like everyone always looks at, obviously, um, crypto is going down quite a bit. As if every many equity markets out there, right? Yeah. Look at um, you know Nasdaq for example is, is is not as crazy down, but it's 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 heading the same direction like many other markets. So um, we are seeing a global a macroeconomic shift away from what was perceived as riskier assets. Um, for those in blockchain, we have just come out of a very strong bull cycle, and the problem with bull cycles in blockchain is that it attracts a, kind of the wrong types of people. Mm. 
Um, so we get a lot of hype, a lot of people trying to make a quick buck. And for those of us that want to just keep building, um, it's somewhat of a distraction. It's just, it's a lot of like fuel to the fire. Yeah. Um, so for us, this is kind of been, we're looking now at a, you know, a good period where we can just all chill out a little bit more and, and just focus on the core parts, which is building these technologies um, without having to worry about um, the next big coin or whatever. We can just focus on our core fundamentals um, and building. And that's what we like to do as builders in the space is just build the next thing. And so the, the, the market's going down, obviously it makes it hard to raise some capital, but you know, a lot of us have kind of done that. Um, we're ready to weather the store. We all, a good a team that's been through these bull bear cycles and these have happened like 2018, a similar drop happened. Uh, even last year, we had a pretty big flat crash and it came back up again. Uh, so we, you're prepared for them and you kind of expect that they're going to come. It's so refreshing to hear you talk there and your attitude towards this. And I think that's what we want to hear here on the Tech Talks Daily if, Podcast. If you don't prepare for winter, you're going to be cold. It's going to yeah. be a tough time. <laughs> I love that. And, of course, you're spinning lots of plates. So what's next for you? What, what's your big focus going to be over the next 12 months? Yeah, so the biggest challenge or the the, the weirdest secret or the, the dirtiest secret with um, blockchain is a lot of the tools that you're using these days on blockchain, the whole point about blockchain is to be decentralized, right? So no one yeah. party can can take you down or can um, censor you or, or change um, the rules of the game. And the sub query, especially one of the biggest challenges that we're trying to do is, is decentralized infrastructure. So we run a lot of this infrastructure for these projects out there. We're currently running that in our managed service. So we run all this um, for our customers. And we run it in a very high performance, high reliability, all those things. But long-term, we want to shift that so that's more decentralized. So it's not just us running it, but it's anyone around the world can run that. And it means that if we cease to operate as a business tomorrow, that same protocol, the same um, the same subquery uh, product will still work. Uh, the sub and this is what we call the subquery network. Yeah, you're decentralizing uh, the infrastructure for a lot of these applications by allowing anyone to run a subquery project and rewarding them using a token. Exactly right. It's the way you uh, pay for utility, but it's also the the market price of of your protocol. So we're tokenizing and decentralizing our network. Um, with the view that, you know, one day when I'm a um, an old man um, rocking my chair, um, the subquery network will still be thriving and growing. I love that. And we began the podcast today talking about your origin story and the journey that you've been on. I'm not going to have a bit of fun with you and ask you to leave everyone listening with a personal note of inspiration. So can you leave us with a song that we can add to our Spotify playlist? Maybe it's a song that inspires you or just helps you get your head in the zone or something you like to work to with it in the background. Is there a story and a choice you have for us? Yeah, yeah, I do. I had to think long and hard about this one because there's a lot of um, music out there but um, I picked a song called Damselfly by Lord Carne um, and uh, um, Tom Mish um, a British artist actually a British rapper um, known for very chill relaxed rap um, but he's known to be the nicest guy in rap uh, he's always friendly um, there's no one that has any issues with him no one's got anything bad to say and I think that's a really good lesson in life right you can still operate in business you can still um, achieve the peaks of what you're trying to do but still be known as the nicest person and, and that's what you have to keep in mind so there's no point um, getting up the hill if you have to push people down on the way up absolutely love that i'm going to add that straight to our spotify playlist and uh, i'm going to check that one out myself and of course we've covered a lot of ground in a short amount of time today from subquery to on finality and the work that you're doing what's the best way um, of finding out more information on everything we've talked about or maybe even joining your community as well where's the best starting point yeah sure so our website's a good starting point um subquery.network so s u b q u e r y dot network and on there, the main community, we're on Twitter. Um, we've got about 55,000 followers on Twitter. Um, but we also have a very sizable Discord if you want to join that as well. Um, Discord is kind of like the, the social media of, of blockchain. It's interesting. Uh, but we have about, I think, about thirty or 40,000 people on Discord uh, talking about it and helping other people build a sub It's an open source tool. So uh, that gives you all the links you know. Um, same with On Finality. On Finality is O-N-F-I-N-A-L-T-Y. Uh, awesome. and uh, you better find that as well but um, thank you very much Neil for having me today and um, especially as we talk across the world um, it was a pleasure joining 
No, thank you so much. It's For me, it's all about helping people. And as I said very early in the podcast, talking about blockchain, crypto and Web3, it can be very daunting for the average business leader and they almost feel intimidated by the crypto bros out there online. So putting it all in a language that everyone can understand, and especially when talking about building decentralized networks that have these huge communities, sorting data for cross-chain application development, building core infrastructure for the blockchain industry, but doing all that in a language that everyone can understand for me will help increase adoption and then help uh, mm. the whole industry to succeed so thank you so much for sharing that and your origin story with everyone today really appreciate your time james thanks neil enjoy your day so a huge thank you to james for talking with me today and also for taking my call at 9 p.m at night because of the time difference between the uk and and new zealand he took my call quite late in the evening so a big thank you to james for that and easy to see why since its launch i think it was last year subquery has raised 10.8 million dollars so far and the platform is serving millions of polka dot data queries daily as well so i'm going to be following james and his work there at subquery and on finality very closely But I'd love to hear your thoughts on anything we discussed today. And if if you'd like to come on here and further demystify any technology, there's an open invite for you to come on here and join me. And all you need to do is email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram at Neil C. Hughes, and we'll keep this conversation going. So today was all about decentralized networks for huge communities, sourcing data for cross-chain application development, Web3, building core infrastructure for the blockchain industry. But what does that leave us to talk about tomorrow? Well, that's it. Regular listeners will know it's time for me to spin the wheel of fortune and we'll reveal what tomorrow's topic is going to be. But as that wheel stops, I'm afraid I'm not going to let you know what tomorrow's topic is. For that, you need to come and join me again. Hopefully you will. So thank you for listening today. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.